The pandemic forced a lot of musicians to hit pause on their careers, but some artists took that time away from touring to create at home. Special correspondent Christopher Booker sat down with the singer Santa Gold about defying genres and addressing racial equity on her eight latest album, which was released yesterday. Sitting somewhere between punk, electronic, and pop, the music of Santi White, better known as Santi Gold, is difficult to define. While it might defy categories, in a streaming world where tens of thousands of new songs are uploaded every day, her voice and unique sound is a reminder that in our digital world, it is still possible to offer something fresh. I think that artists are kind of like mirrors to culture. And so we, what we write and what we create is a way that culture can see itself from different perspectives and a way that we can help move things forward and sort of be bridges to what's next. What White has been constructing these bridges since her 2008 breakout, Santo Gold, an album that from its first track to its last offered a steady assault on musical stereotypes and typecast. But the genre bending album almost didn't happen. I met with the AR guy and he was like, Yeah, this seems confused and it doesn't really make sense and you're all over the place. There was nothing you could have called that that would have fit because it was just so mixed up, but it was everything that I was. And I feel like I opened a lot of doors for all artists and particularly artists of color who were trying to do something outside of the little tiny box that was a lot of for them. But you have to be a rapper, you have to be an R&B rap singer. Rapper R&B. Yeah. And even when I came out, they were like, in all the press, it was like, rapper Santi Gold, R&B singer Santi Gold. And I was like, really? OK. In the years since, she's only solidified her idiosyncratic stature. Don't look ahead, there's stormy weather. Another roadblock in our way. But in 2019, White says her creative fire hose started to run dry. You know, I had some songs that I had started, just like little bits of ideas. And I went in my studio and I was like, I'm gonna write some songs. Nothing, just nothing. I had no lyrics, no ideas even of what I was gonna write about. Um, then the world flipped upside down. Like so many of us during that spring of 2020, White found herself forced to stay still. Hold up at home with her husband and three children. She says the change wasn't easy. I was the only one in the house that could cook, only one that deep clean, only one, yeah, I wasn't the only one wiping butts, but we were literally like, I mean, two year olds, just turned two year olds. And I just felt like I was drowning in that, but then also outside of the house, black people getting killed day after day, the riots were happening, the protests, f wildfires in California. Like, it was just like, it was too much. But slowly, White says she started to find time, returning for small sessions in her backyard studio. Finally, I made it out to the back house, and I just, I never wrote lyrics faster. You know, it was just like I had, it was my opportunity to take a moment to feel, to process, to like be with myself, be with my thoughts, be with my feelings. This flood of activity resulted in the album Spirituals, out this week. It tackles today's major issues, especially racial equity. Do you feel that you, a certain pressure to respond to the world and what's happening in the world? I grew up listening to music that was topical music. Like, so to me, that's what music was. You know, as a child, my father was listening to Fela Kuti and uh, Burning Spear and Marvin Gaye and Nina Simone. I come from that, you know, legacy of musicians where it's like, that's what we do. She's also tapping into this legacy in the visual work. For the video for her song, Shake, she recreates one of the most horrific yet iconic scenes in the civil rights movement of the 1960s. I had been just collecting images for this project and I was just so uh, emotionally like impacted by the, the images of the people, the civil rights protesters getting hosed and like pinned against the wall. And, and you know, so many of them were like kids and teenagers and like young people. I mean, the song was for me very much about human resilience and about just moving through the challenges, the trauma, the hardship. It was very fitting to just put myself in front of a hose <laughs> and to try to keep moving through it because that's what generations of women, generations of black women, generations of 
black people have had to do. The reason I call my record Spirituals is because the Negro Spirituals were a way to transcend people's circumstances and, and experience joy and freedom when there was none visibly around them. Music has always been a place for transcendence and, and for, for fighting and moving forward. So that's why I make music, you know, so that um, what the music does for me can do for other people. For PBS News Weekend, I'm Christopher Booker.